This week on the Ritual Misery podcast, we were South by South absent. But we got a bunch of wind here in southern New Mexico. And here in central Alaska. Um, but drivers are dumb. Yeah, also happy Pi Day. Of course, of course, happy Pi Day. Um, what's up with Captain Marvel? Like, is that a thing? Uh, we're about to find out. All right, well, let's, uh, let's humble ourselves a little bit. Hello and welcome to the Ritual Misery Podcast, episode 206 for Thursday, the 14th of March, 2019. This is a show where two lifelong friends and their, their guests celebrate all things geek. Damn it! I'm Amos, that's Kent, and I'm just never going to get that shit right. Oh my gosh, man. About, I don't know, about one out of eight times, you do pretty well. Yeah? yeah I'm, I'm, I mean, that'd be a good, that'd be a good, good batting average, wouldn't it? Uh, No. <laughs> whatever Not dude really. you, you you do you hey man um uh so you're getting some wind down there like uh like super wind jeez dude okay so i guess most of the country like you know well at least uh midwest and north are experiencing this this uh what are they calling it cyclone bomb or something like that some crazy sure i don't know man but here in southern new mexico we've been getting stupid wind it was actually Fairly calm today, mm. but the past two days in a row, literally all day long, it sounded like the walls were coming down. <laughs> we had yesterday in, I, I don't know if it was in town or on the base, but we had gusts of 75 miles an hour. Mm. Uh, we were getting, yesterday we were getting sustained winds of 50. Uh, the day before that it was like probably I don't know, 35, 40 sustained and gusts over 50. Yeah. Uh, there was a couple towns a little south of Roswell that got tornadoes. Um, those weren't tornadoes. Midwest. Those are just aliens landing. Yeah, maybe. Maybe. Could have been. Uh, there, there was a, a train near us that got blown off the tracks by the wind. That's uh, sick. Yeah. Like, it's... Uh, oh, we had a car on base. Uh, yes, It was either yesterday or the day before. I think it was the day before yesterday that was uh, coming around the bend a little too fast. It was also raining, so it was kind of slick, and its back tire like hit the curb, and then the wind caught underneath it and flipped the car. <laughs> uh, yeah, so it's been a little breezy here in southern New Mexico. That's awesome. We regularly get um, you know, 60, 70 mile an hour gusts just for no reason. Uh, most of the time, we max out about a 30 mile an hour wind in the last couple of days. We are on the tail end, I hope, of one such uh, windstorm. We probably get a mm, couple dozen uh, first half of the year and a couple dozen the last half of the year. Right, right at the season change, you know. It's it's uh, mm -hmm. so it's getting from cold to warm. It's up to like the forties now. Um, and <laughs> I say it's up to the forties, but the whole family is out uh, snowboarding. So <laughs> take that for what you will. Um, but yeah, the, the, I'm I'm no stranger to strong winds, and it kind of it debilitates everything around here from act, outdoor activities. Even though they do still play sports like school sports stuff like that, and man, you've never seen a soccer ball fly backwards. <laughs> uh, you need to come out and check this stuff out in the middle of uh, early May when a windstorm happens during like a championship game. That's pretty crazy, dude. When, yeah, wind is my least favorite weather condition because like I can grill in the rain, mm -hmm. I can grill snow. I can grill in just about any weather, hot, cold. It yep. doesn't matter. But if it's windy, like if, if the wind is like 12 miles an hour or more, I ain't grilling. Yeah. And, and that's my thing. I, I don't mind being wet, so rain doesn't bother me. I'm, I don't really mind being cold, so being in the cold or the snow, that doesn't really bother me too much. Um, but the wind can fuck up just any old day. Yep. Just any day, yep. just randomly, just, oh, yeah, by yep. the way, doesn't, today's shit now. doesn't matter if it's if it's wet, dry, hot, cold. Nope. Uh, doesn't None of that matters. Uh, wind sucks no matter yeah. what. No, I love a breeze up to about 5, 10 miles an hour. Yeah. Yeah. Amazing. Sure. Yeah. Keep that coming. Anything <laughs> over 10 can go fuck itself. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> Put ritual misery down on the record. Yeah. Anti can go fuck itself. Yeah, anti wind, anti wind. <laughs> even even that is when our was... joint platform, <laughs> single issue voters over here. We have to stop climate change because wind sucks. That's why it's <laughs> make that happen. 
Um, hey, man, uh, last weekend was South by Southwest, but as I said during the pre-show, we were South by so absent. Um, yeah. uh, I didn't really even catch a lot of what was going on, and I haven't seen the Night Attack live show. Like, I feel completely disconnected and discombobulated. Yeah, dude. I, I've i kind of been absent from social media for a while now. Like, I tweeted something the other day, and every now and then I'll, I'll try to catch up on some tweets. But, man, I was completely absent from social media this weekend. Mm. Barely caught wind of anything that was going on. Yeah. I, too, have not yet watched the live show. It's in my... It's in my uh, podcatcher. It's ready for for listening anyway. Yeah. Uh, uh, yeah, man. Uh, completely absent it's this just, year. Yeah, just sad. Just it's this sad. is a departure from all previous <laughs> years. <laughs> We've never had a year of ritual misery in which we did not go to South by. That's accurate, and that's so sad. Yeah, this is the first year that ritual misery has missed south by since we started podcasting yeah so we're just gonna have to double do it next year uh, uh yeah <laughs> <laughs> um yeah. we know for a long time that you and i have had different uh, opinion well actually we have the same opinion on windows versus mac mac is just better but windows has more capabilities because of uh the higher adoption rate so right my rig that I that I stream on, that I edit podcasts on, that I work on now, and that, that everything else is a Windows machine. And uh, I thought this would be good good a good time to bring in some of the differences between your machine and your work center and my machine and my work center. So I asked you for a, a picture prior to us going live tonight, and you sent me a a a wonderful picture of how you podcast your podcast station. So yes. I'm going to pop that up on screen. There you go. There's Kent's uh, workstation. You can see his, uh, his his iMac that he's running right now. His soundboard sitting next to it. His MacBook Pro sitting off to the side. Uh, he's got a couple lights up there, and he's got a microphone on a boom arm and a beer ready to go. Yep. And uh, don't forget my iPad Mini with my sound effects loaded up. Yes, yes. I almost did forget your iPad Mini with your sound effects uh, right there in the middle. Now, um... The whole reason I bring this up, really, is because you have a soundboard plugged into your Mac, and it works fine. It does. It it does. It works yeah, fine. Yeah, every time. Yeah, okay. Now, <laughs> let's progress to the next uh, exhibit B, if we were. <laughs> okay. Um, I mean, I only sent one picture, so, like, um, where'd you get exhibit B? I don't, I don't understand. From my studio. Oh, we're sw- oh, we're done talking <laughs> about mine? I mean, mine's so elaborate. Uh, no, it's not. <laughs> yeah, well, I was joking earlier that and, and you, my Spartan setup over here. Do, do you have a foam pad under your keyboard? Um, it's actually a box because I'm using a. So the desk that I'm using for my setup is um, basically trash furniture. <laughs> I got this at a uh, at a thrift store for like ten bucks or something like that because mm-hmm. it was the only thing that could fit in the corner of the room that I was using at the time. The problem with getting trash furniture is it's not always flat. <laughs> <laughs> so my keyboard <laughs> will rock back and forth slightly, and it's distracting and awful, especially when it makes noises. So I got this this. Uh, box right here for the video viewers you can see it's it's actually got a plaque inside of it from one of my uh like going away gifts from uh when i was in the air force (laughs) and uh that's what i set my keyboard on now so that it's nice and level and uh doesn't rock back and forth janky as fuck i thought it'd be for ergonomics or something like yeah it just didn't sit quite right i just made up all that shit that i just said it's definitely for ergonomics (laughs) Uh, i'm <laughs> um, okay, uh, here, here's another question for you. I see some some cables and stuff uh, on the back side of your desk. Like, do you have other things that you plug in, or is that just like a charging port for the mouse and your phone and you know uh, yep. silly stuff so, like that? Yeah, I've got I've got charging cables back here, and I've got um, so what you might see like in the far left of the picture, um, I've got an additional XLR cable. Uh, that I've got plugged into my board, but mm-hmm. I've got the cord wrapped up and just kind of tucked into the shelf there. Gotcha, yeah. Uh, you know, ready for another microphone at a moment's notice. Yeah, okay. Uh, yeah, and that's 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 pretty much it. All the other their cables are in use at the moment. So you have the capability of two people 
using microphones into your soundboard, but you don't have the capability for two people using headphones coming out of the keyboard, the, the soundboard. I do actually, because I've got a <laughs> splitter on my headphone jack. <laughs> uh, not only that, my um, uh, ATR twenty one hundreds have their own headphone jacks mm -hmm. built into. Yep. The, uh, okay, so here we go. Here we're going to switch from yours to mine. All um, right. Yeah. Make make sure you're watching this because uh, I want to want you to see the transition. Um, and, and explain. No, I explained yours. You explain mine. Okay. Okay. Here we go. All right, so uh, first of all, dramatic lighting, right? You know, I get... <laughs> yes. So yeah, and a somewhat less Spartan setup over here. You've got mini screens. Mm. Uh, looks like you've got a uh, the bottom left there. I believe that is your iPad Pro. Mm -hmm. Yep, and then you've got uh, a two monitor setup. Actually, a three. Is that two different computers or three computers? Uh, it's two I total. Mean... Three monitors on, with two computers. So all got three it, monitors right. can go to Windows, and the one off to the far right can go to Mac uh, uh, with the press of a button. Okay, yeah, and then there in the middle, it looks like you have an iPad. Yes, it's a old. It's the first Retina iPad. So this is my daughter's old iPad. Um, she inherited my iPad Mini, and I inherited her really old iPad that wasn't keeping up with her games anymore. And now I use it as my clock slash message reminder. Gotcha. You've also got a you've got an iPod Touch. A, um, or no, that's not a touch. That's an iPod Classic. Classic. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And um, oh gosh, I forget the name of the thing. The oh. cool thing with the buttons. Elgato Stream Deck. Stream Deck. There yep. we go. Uh, yeah, and you've got your microphone on a boom arm. You've got a couple of stereo speakers set up. Mm -hmm. And, uh, of course, your Alaskan Brewery uh, beer koozie up there. Right. Right next to your South by Southwest koozie. Yes. <sighs> okay. And I, I think my favorite piece of this entire thing is your your ceremonially placed first dollar bill uh, <laughs> from your uh, uh, professional podcasting career. Yes, yes, yes. Um, you did miss the Mac Mini underneath the iPad. Ah, uh, Yes. Yes, I do see it there. Uh, which is the Mac that I have hooked up to the keyboard and mouse sitting here. Um, mm -hmm. my, 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 ma my Magic Mouse, original edition Magic Mouse, doesn't always work very well. So that's why I have the other USB mouse plugged in right next to it. <laughs> oh, right, right. Good, good to have. <laughs> yep. Um, and of course, you got my soundboard all the way off to the right over there mm -hmm. with mm -hmm. a plethora of wires and switches and all kinds of stuff. And my Nintendo or SNES Classic. You can see the controller in the picture, but... Uh, um, of course, these pictures will be in the show notes for people to wonder about. <laughs> um, yes, that is that. All that is to say that my soundboard doesn't like my computer, doesn't like my uh, life. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Uh, would this, by chance, be a driver issue? It would, because Windows doesn't play well with devices. Uh, so the problem Some is that. Uh, Windows wants to use its own, win it's classic Windows drivers. Classic Windows drivers can't do a lot of things. They can basically send sound in stereo and receive sound in stereo. That's not so good when you're dealing with a multi-channel um, USB 2 mixer. So I was using the ASIO drivers. Mm. Uh, during the last Windows update, somehow the ASIO drivers no longer works, where anytime I'm playing in Audition, I have to have Audition set to 48 kilohertz, but if I'm recording, it has to record at 41.1. Not kidding. So over the weekend, I tried to do a video, a tutorial video on Audition, where I was going to be talking and using Audition at the same time. I had to record in 44.1 through OBS Studio, but Audition wanted to play at 48K, so the two would not work, would not mesh. It took me about seven hours to figure out the driver issue, and essentially the ASIO drivers no longer work for my soundboard. I have to use the Wasapi drivers, which I had forgotten all about because they're kind of new and very underutilized. And it's not exactly pretty. So now every time I load up a template, I have to reassign all the channel mapping and shit like that. It's annoying. I wish they would just make shit work. Yeah. And that's man, drivers are something that I've almost forgotten all about. Yeah. As using my Mac, I I don't know that I've ever had to go out and find a driver to install. 
Right, because uh, yeah, it's it's one of the things that I really love about Mac and I really hate about Windows. But uh, but now now it's working fine. I mean, it's not as pretty as it was, but it's working fine. It just pisses me off that I spent seven hours or six hours, whatever, looking for trying to troubleshoot a driver issue when apparently no one on the entire internet has ever had the exact problem that I was having. That's always been my experience. I always go to the the forums or even like you know if it's if it's an a very precise Windows problem. I will go to Windows help. Yeah. And apparently, yeah, I'm the only person on the planet that has ever had whatever or, issue I was having. And the, 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 I forget who tweeted this, but someone tweeted, um, 90% of my time on the internet is sent, spent browsing around finding other people that have had my problem exactly and didn't return to post the solution. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. They, they are. Yeah. They're, oh, never mind. Fixed it. Yeah. Fuck you, internet. <laughs> so so that's where i'm at that's that was my, that's my week in a, in a nutshell um okay. you went to see uh well we'll get we'll get to that in a second um have you ever heard of humble bundle i know you have i have of course. have you ever yeah, have you ever purchased a humble bundle i don't believe i have uh, i hadn't either <laughs> okay this week the Humble Bundle includes Civilization VI. That ah, caught my eye yeah. because I love Civilization, especially Civilization V, VI, IV, four, three, two. I don't have the first one. That's the only one I don't have. Um, so it caught my eye. I figured I'd look at it. Twenty uh, fifteen dollars I think, is the buy-in for the top prize. And you get Civilization VI and all this other stuff. So I went ahead and bought the hum Humble Bundle. Um, if you don't know what it is, go to HumbleBundle.com. Um, a link will be in the show notes that will actually, it's like a friend, friendship link or whatever gives me a discount if you use it. Um, but this one in particular has a game called Niche where you're, you're there's some DNA splicing and you're trying to get animals to grow. Escalation, which I have nothing, no idea about. Throne of Lies, I haven't played yet. Plague Inc., which if you have an iPad and you haven't played Plague Inc., what is wrong with you? Um, you're basically trying to, trying to develop a virus to kill the entire world. It's amazing. Stellaris. Yeah, it's a full game version of that. Yeah, this is the full, and it's exactly the same because it came out of iPad first, and this is exactly the same as, like, you're still click, you're, you're moving your mouse to click the to pop the bubbles. I mean, it's it's full on the same game. Um, Stellaris, I haven't played, but it was on my wish list uh, because uh, on my uh, my Steam wish list because I had heard it was awesome and whatever. Offworld Trading Company was on there as well, and um, then Civ Six, of course. So I went ahead and bought it. I gave Civ Six to my stepson. Uh, so he has it now because those are the only, only civiliz civilization game that he didn't have. And I went ahead and signed up for the Humble Bundle Pass because every month on the first Friday of the month, they give you like nine games. And normally I wouldn't care because like who gives a shit, right? I looked at the past games and over half of my wish list has been in those bundles mm. in the past six months. Mm. So if I'd... Wow. Yeah, I was so pissed. So one of the one of the things I love about hum Humble Bundle though is their charity contributions, which is kind of the point of the Humble Bundle. Mm -hmm. They they uh, support charities such right. as like Make a Wish and uh, American Red Cross and, and um, I, Ex I think Extra they Life is this month. Yeah, Extra Life. Yep, um, they support all these these charities and basically get developers to basically donate their game mm -hmm. for the bundles uh, for the. For the charities, and, and, and uh, it's not just games. It's, there's also eBooks. There's uh, been yep. a few times where it's been regular books that actually ship you the book. Um, and, and typically, is, am I wrong in saying that typically there's a there's like a minimum buy-in for it, and that, but you can donate as much as you would like. So we'll can, we'll oh. use this one as an example. I'll bring this up on the screen. Um, there's 11 days left to get in on it. Uh, you you pay a dollar or more, and you get these three games, which is Niche, Escalation, and Throne of Lives. Okay. I mean, games I'd never heard of, but all right, it, might be, it might be cool. Pay $9 or more, and you also unlock Plague, Inc. and Stellaris. Mm -hmm. And then if you pay more than the average at the time that you buy it, uh, then you get the next tier, which in this case is Dungeons 3, Offworld Trading Company, and Offworld Trading Company, Jupiter's Forge DLC. So there's those four tiers, and then the max tier on this one is 15, and you also get Civilization 6. And these are all Steam games, so they, they work on the Steam. It tells you what platforms are good. So most of these are good for at least Windows and Mac. Uh, several of them are good for Linux as well. 
So yeah, you you pay a dollar. You just and you can pay any amount you want. Like uh, dollar, I think is the minimum because like you, they need a minimum, right? But you pay a dollar, and when you whenever you buy the the bundle, you can actually decide who gets what, how much humble gets for their administrative costs, how much the charity gets, and then how much the developers get. You can actually split mm -hmm. that up uh, between those three categories. So. It's really, really cool. I, I, I like it. I'm glad I did it. I'm glad I finally took the plunge and, and bought some shit on Humble because I've always seen, oh, that'd be cool, but I don't know. I, don't know. And I figured, you know what? I'll go ahead and do it this time, and then we can talk about it, and then it becomes a business ex expense. So fuck it. Oh, there you go. <laughs> Life hacks. So, and, and for the record, I spent 25 I went and went 10 over the minimum and made sure that all 10 of those dollars went to um, Extra Life. Excellent. So, that's man. That's really cool. Yeah, it's was, it was, it was pretty. And, and I got a bunch of cool games to play. So, yeah. At yeah. least three. At least three of these games were on my wish list. So I'm I'm happy with it. Yeah. Uh, we saw Captain Marvel this weekend. And uh, you give me your one thumb review. Uh, it would be thumbs up. Okay. Yeah. Um, it, it was good. <laughs> it, it's not. I wouldn't put it in the top five of the MCU movies. Mm -hmm. uh, but that's okay. It doesn't have to be. The The worst MCU movie to come out is probably, I don't know, Iron Man 3, probably, or like Thor 2. Um, now, but even is, those are still Are the fun. old Hulk fun. movies still technically part of the MCU, or is that like washed away and it started over? The, la the latest Hulk movie. So Just the one, the one with Edward Norton is MCU. Okay. Yeah. But I, I, who remembers that movie? Right. Exactly. That, that's that's kind of what I was getting at. <laughs> right. Yeah. 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 I mean, there's been so many now. But We're see, like, I, I couldn't even get past Iron Man two. Like Iron Man two just pissed me off. And I don't even remember exactly why. I just didn't like it. Yeah. Don't don't bother watching Iron Man three. <laughs> it's not going to get better for you. <laughs> just jump right into the Avengers and, and like, or Ragnarok and yeah. Uh, Guardians of the Galaxy. Oh no, uh, Gar Guardians of the Galaxy. I saw both those. Those were really good. I enjoyed oh, both yeah. of those. Those are pretty great. Then you would it, but, you would love Thor Ragnarok. But they were, they were kind of standalone though. Those two didn't. I mean, they they tied in technically, but they they stood on their own. You didn't have to know sure. any of the other stories to really enjoy them. Absolutely, and and I think that's the case with most of the movies, like uh, uh, Captain America: Civil War, and of course the Avengers movies. Kind of like you kind of got to know what's going on. Right, uh, but most most of them, I think, do a decent job of standing on their own. Um, Cap Captain Marvel was fun. It was it was a lot of fun. Uh, there was a lot of throwback because it takes place in the '90s. Uh, so they do, uh, I guess, origin light stories for like uh, some some characters that we were introduced to a long time ago in mm. Avengers and things like that. Um, so I mean, I don't know. It's not for everybody necessarily, uh, but I enjoyed it. And uh, one thing that I that is particularly cool to me is they filmed a lot of this movie on Nellis Air Force Base, and they had on scene uh, consultants, uh, F sixteen pilots, mm -hmm. and I know some of the pilots that consulted on that movie. In fact, the pilot that gave Brie Larson her ride on an F sixteen, I know her. Nice. <laughs> So that's that's really cool. And then at the end of the movie, they give a a dedication. Uh, they dedicate the movie to the memory of uh, Cajun is his call sign. He um, was the Thunderbird four pilot. Mm. That was one of the on set consultants. And sadly, about a week after he was done with the consulting gig, he died in an aircraft accident. Mm. Uh, so they they dedicated the film to him so That's that cool. was a like an extra little neat thing about the movie for me no we don't have a movie draft minute for this week uh because well the only one movie is out and it's captain marvel so everybody's at zero except for have a drink and have yeah. a drink currently has 179 million dollars already um as of today yeah so uh yeah we so we did our um like we hinted about already we did our our movie draft on saturday mm -hmm. and um i don't know man how do, how do you feel about our our haul i honestly uh, uh, uh like i said at the end of uh the stream on saturday 
the only thing that I wish we'd done was get uh, Child's Play instead of A Dog's Journey. Um, that was just yeah. a miscommunication on our part. But, right. but well, other than that, Child's Play, I think, is only going to make like, I don't know, maybe 10 grand. I mean, t- like uh, maybe. Yeah. Like, I don't know. Like it, not much more than. than yeah, it. it's it, it, right. But we're penny pinching right now because there's a lot That's, of good okay, slates. Yeah. So, so to, to run down our list, we've got A Dog's Journey, Aladdin, Godzilla, King of the Monsters, Secret Life of Pets 2 and Spider-Man Far From Home, mm-hmm. which is not a bad lineup but if you go through the other team's lineups like right. nobody got a bad lineup except for one team yeah and then they, they had a typo error that that uh, <gasps> oh that's the risk man. of uh that's the risk of playing though you know yeah and so, sometimes you go to put five dollars on the craps table and you put a 50 down instead and you're like oh shit yeah so ga- team game night so w scott is one who hosted the, the stream team or the, yeah the stream team di- uh, movie draft by the way yeah uh so Fitz, yep, had a, a, a typing error, and he was trying to bid six dollars. I think yes. and accidentally bid sixty-three yeah. dollars. Was it sixty-three or sixty-eight or some something like that for uh, what movie was that? Was 63 it long three for long, long shot. shot? Yeah, yeah, he definitely did not intend to do that. It basically, the, blew the highest of purchase money. price of the draft. <laughs> he pulled the <a> Sarah Lane. <laughs> And <laughs> killed their chances of buying pretty much anything else. Yeah. So over on uh, Will's uh, Twitch channel, um, uh, what is it called? Uh, is it game? Is it game? DC Game Night? What I is his so. Twitch channel? Uh, yeah. So go over and and try to watch that if you can, and just listen to how deflated Will gets <laughs> when that happened. Oh my god! Well, I, I felt so I, bad that it was also like I heard Fitz. Fitz said, "Oh shit!" Before I even <laughs> saw the update that he had done it, so I was like, "What's he talking about?" Oh man, yeah, so bad. But uh, but yeah, besides that team, like everybody got a pretty good. It, it might have been because that team screwed up that uh, that we didn't get uh, that, that everybody got a decent s- slate. That could, yeah, that could be because that was fairly early in the draft. That was like the fifth or sixth movie or something when that happened. Uh, well, I mean, it's technically the twelfth, but it's still pretty early. Oh, twelve! Oh my gosh, it was that far in. Apparently, uh, according to this little yeah, sheet my, I'm looking my, at. My pick to win this season, though, has to be Movie Party. They got a crazy lineup. They, so they got Avengers Endgame, which mm-hmm. by itself is, I guarantee, is going to be the highest grossing movie. Yeah, uh, John Wick. Win, just that probably but yeah they got they got us curse of la llorona in game john wick chapter three parabellum and it chapter two yeah like what like i think they're gonna walk away with this one yeah yeah so but it's too early to congratulate them we've got uh several months of listening to big voice jay tell us (laughs) how bad we're losing and that will start next week. Yeah, and it's going to be a while before our first movie comes out. Our our first one isn't until December May of next year, right? I think it's December of next year. Yeah, yeah, probably. <laughs> <laughs> it seems that way. Actually, isn't it supposed to be December this year that the new Star Wars movie comes out? Correct. Yes. And, and do we have any details on that? Um, do we have a, it's, do we have a uh, title? The ninth chapter in the Skywalker saga. Yeah, we don't have a uh, we don't have a title on it yet. Not yet. Hmm. I think the first part is going to be Star Wars. That's a uh, that's my best guess. With or without a colon? <laughs> um, probably with. Ooh, spicy. <sighs> um, but yeah. So that's movies. Um, since we're probably not going to win a lot of money uh, comparatively in the movie draft. If you want to help us out financially, head over to patreon.com slash ritual misery. <laughs> what might they find over there, Amos? Uh, exclusive content, uh, early episodes. Uh, you'll find more than what you'll find on the normal feed because uh, we do pre, do uh, pre and post show uh, exclusives on there. Um, so in case you can't catch the live stream, you can catch some of the pre and post on there. And also some uh, some more add-ins. Uh, this, this week we had uh, Tom Merritt. 
um, did a little thing for us during the movie or the the movie draft during this the the streamathon, and mm-hmm. we p- uh, can't put that out for you, so you can enjoy all the the mumblings of of Tom Merritt and how he sounds extremely professional. And we sound like complete garbage because we knew exactly what it was going to say and it still didn't matter because we screwed it up anyway. Yeah, and I want to I thank W. Scott S. One for uh, resubscribing to the Ritual Wizardry Podcast. Thank you so much. Um, yeah, that's another way that you can support us, uh, audio listeners. Go over to twitch.tv slash Ritual Misery. And uh, if you're an Amazon Prime member, you are also a Twitch Prime member and you can give us your free monthly subscription. We'd appreciate the hell out of that. Yep. Doesn't cost you anything. Helps us out a lot. Hell yeah. All right. So is it a time for me to hit the button? Yep. Can I please have your attention? In the last 30 minutes, Kent's done something. Now you've got a guess. He was very excited. Kent's games. Play with him. Play with him. Play with him. Uh, real quick, dude. Do you know the best part about being in Alaska? Um, no. I have found that I don't need a fridge in my room for about half the year. I just put my beer on the windowsill and it keeps it nice and cold. <gasps> oh, man. <laughs> not happy about that. <laughs> you know, it wasn't much different in Indiana, especially when, when we had like really old, shitty, like wooden sill, old windows, like single yeah. pane. Yeah, because we uh, lived in lean-tos. That's what we did. We lived in yeah. lean-tos. <laughs> Basically. We didn't even have glass. It was designed as such. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, we didn't have glass. We had bottles in the wall that were just plugging holes you could look through. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> oh, my God. All right. This week's game is called Easy as Pie. Hmm. Because today is Pie Day. It is. It is the 14th of March, mm. or 314. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, so... I couldn't find a whole lot of interesting pie questions. So you have six questions this week as opposed okay. to the normal. Um, that means I can miss fewer than I normally do. Correct. <laughs> all right. So your first question, and of course, these are all going to be about pie. Right. Although first- you haven't mentioned which type of pie, which I'm guessing is probably part of the game. Okay, let's go. All right. So in fact, your first question is, which type of pie... <laughs> <laughs> is the most popular in the U.S. And you have no choices. This is all fill in the blank. Pumpkin, no. Hmm. Spent too much time in Texas where everybody loves pecan pie, and those are disgusting. <laughs> um, I'm going to go with uh, apple pie. Yeah, of course. It's as American as apple pie. Uh, something except, like uh, except uh, apple pie is an American. <laughs> so, so something like a quarter of Americans say that apple is their favorite, followed by I think it's seventeen percent for pumpkin. Pumpkin, yeah. Um, yeah. What, what is your favorite pie? It'd be so easy to say cherry pie right now. Um, however, I. Th- uh, honestly, my uh, my wife makes an amazing sweet potato pie, and hmm. that would outclass most pumpkin pies by just a smidge. Um, but if to be completely honest, my aunt Debbie makes an apple pie that I've only ever had twice, but it literally shook my shocks, shook my socks both times. Like it was to <laughs> die for. Socks. Oh my god! And I don't even know if it was like Aunt Dorothy's recipe or something she did herself or. Or, but Aunt Deb's apple pie was just so stupid good. Yeah, and it's interesting too how different a pie will will taste depending on who made it. Yeah, um, in the season yeah, these were I had them both in, during Thanksgiving, so that that tempers the the taste buds. Sure. Yeah, and I, I think I can consistently say that, or or I I think I can say that consistently my favorite pie is apple, uh, because like you know like you said it depends on who makes it right, mm-hmm. but like if if someone makes an apple pie and a pumpkin pie, I'm probably going to mo- like their apple pie better than their pumpkin pie. Hmm. You know, I might like someone else's pumpkin pie better than their apple pie, but if we're comparing 
individual bakers, I'm probably going to enjoy their their apple pie more. As a general rule, apple pie would be higher. Um, but I really think I like pumpkin pie more. Yeah, yeah. Oh, and I and don't get me wrong. I love me some pumpkin pie. I just love pie. Like, I just love pie. Exactly. <laughs> Give me some pie, damn it. Except for pecan pie, it's shit. <laughs> Keep your damn All right, pecan your pie. Second, your second question. How about a walnut it's pie? Six... I would try that. Oh, I'd totally try that. Yeah. Bring Just... it on. Somebody make us a walnut pie. I'm down. <laughs> <laughs> All right. In 1644, pie eating was banned as a pagan act of pleasure in which country? Way back in 1644. England. Yeah, of course, England. <laughs> why would it? Why would it be anything else? Um, yeah, damn pagans. I think it was like mincemeat pie specifically that they banned. Uh, but, like, uh, like, is that spam pre-spam? Because that's what I, mean, I would imagine. <laughs> oh, it'd be more like potted meat. I think. Uh, isn't that kind of the same? <laughs> <laughs> it's like if you puree spam. <laughs> <laughs> it's kind of what potted meat oh is. My God. But if you puree head cheese, does that become spam? <laughs> uh, oh, oh dude. deep cut. Head cheese is disgusting. <laughs> oh my. You ever smelled it? Yes. It's so bad, dude. I've never tasted it because I can't get over the smell of it. I can't get, get over the, the sight. I've yeah. never smelled it once. It's so bad. <laughs> <laughs> Let us know out there if you, if you like head cheese. Like, who the fuck likes head cheese? Head cheese pie. When, when I was working at the grocery store, I saw, I think I saw exactly one old man buy head cheese. Mm. Your uncle used to buy yeah. head cheese. Did, well, to stock the store? Or no. To, no. Like, for himself? Yeah. I did not know that. Was it? Was I could it have gone uncle? the rest of my life not knowing that. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> That's upsetting. <laughs> Bad weave in the chat says, dives away from his keyboard to hurl. Yep. Uh, yeah. Oh, my gosh. All right. So your third question. What is the official pie of Florida? If you think about it for a moment, it might it, it might just become clear and obvious to you. If you give it just a little bit of thought. Uh, I'm going to go pecan pie. Key lime pie. Oh, it's not even a pie, it's a custard. Oh. <laughs> um, yeah, it's like, uh, uh, well, gosh, what is it? Boston cream pie is not a pie, it's a cake. Right. And uh, cheesecake is not cake, it's a pie. Cheesecake is a custard. Mm, okay. Yeah. Still a pie. Whatever. <laughs> Scram- scrambled eggs are, are, are a soup, so whatever. <laughs> and, also, and also, like, McDonald's pies are not pies. They're turnovers. Right. <laughs> Which isn't it like, just, like, isn't a turnover just like a piece of a pie? <laughs> that you flip over? <laughs> I don't know. I don't know. Uh, that's like a, uh, a a pizza is an unfolded calzone, <laughs> right? I, I maybe. I mean, I, I don't know. Uh, Bad weave in the chat says my grandmother ate that shit fried on white bread with mayonnaise. <laughs> How she didn't die at age forty five is beyond me. I just um, sh- just shared something with you, and yeah. Um, mm. Pictures of head cheese. That is fucking disgusting. And uh, <laughs> back to the quiz. Number four. Kansas once made it illegal to serve what on cherry pie? Whipped cream. Oh, 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 oh. No, nope, I still get the point. Yeah, I, you'll get the point because uh, I suck. Um, it is not, in fact, whipped cream, though. Is it cherries? It's ice cream. Ice cream. Kansas. 
made it illegal to serve ice cream on cherry pie. Fine. <laughs> I, I, I kind of like to know the story behind that. Like, <laughs> why? South Carolina, it's illegal for men to have uh, back pockets on their jeans because uh, that's how you carried your flask back in the prohibition. And they just never updated the laws. So, like, it didn't surprise me. Yeah, yeah. All right. Number five. Today, we typically eat pie as dessert. Mm -hmm. In the 19th century, fruit pies were usually eaten when? Um, Breakfast. Yeah, of course. Uh, fruit for breakfast. It's yeah. pretty common still. They, even. They, they didn't have electricity, but they knew how to fucking eat breakfast. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And, uh, you know, fruit pies are they're, they're uh, pretty hearty. So, it, you know, gives you a good start to your day. I, I can see eating pie for breakfast. Have you ever eaten pie for breakfast? I have. I, I have I've, as well. I've eaten pizza pie, apple pie, pumpkin pie, sweet potato like pie. That, like, like November 28th, 29th. <laughs> like, I'm probably eating pie for breakfast. <laughs> Is there another option? <laughs> All right. Your final question. Number okay. Six. Dun, dun, dun. Which famous physicist was born today? Well, not today, like actually today, but on March 14th. Wouldn't, it, wouldn't Albert Einstein born on March 14th? <laughs> of course, of course. That's Einstein nice. was born on Pi Day. Uh, so... Really, you got four out of six correct, but because of my f up, but you I'm get totally five yeah. I'm totally taking credit for five because out fuck of a you. possible six. Yeah. So, uh, well done, well done. All right, now we get on to our main topic for the evening. Uh huh. This is where you hit the sounder again. Uh, that one? No, 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 no. The other one. Uh, no, no. Oh, yes. Ah, that one. Yeah. So, Amos, go ahead and uh, like uh, g give us a good segue right right into our main topic. There. Okay. So, Kit and I were talking earlier. To, er, well, we were talking yesterday, and he said it was my turn to come up with the main topic. I said it was his turn to come up with the main topic, and then life happened. We both got busy, and we never we, neither one of us came up with the main topic. So. Uh, today's main topic is, and Kent is going to start by explaining exactly how has affected him in his life. Um, yeah. So one time when I was stationed in Korea, yeah. Um, I'm going to talk about soju. I'm going to tell a soju story. <laughs> is 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 that where you first discovered? As a Soju? platform for ideas? Oh. <laughs> I see what's happening here. I uh, see yeah, what's yeah, happening yeah, I think so. here. So, so, yeah, I don't know. I, I, I say we tell a couple of random stories, see where it goes, and then uh, and then kind of just uh, wrap up the show from there. Have you ever had soju it. pie? I have not had soju pie. Would you uh, have soju pie? I would try soju pie. I would try soju pie. You would probably eat the whole pie. Mm, I do love soju. <laughs> and we love pie. <laughs> <laughs> I wonder how soju feels about pie. Uh, so one night, so I was, I was working mid shift, uh, uh, which is basically people would refer to it as graveyard shift. Right. 10, 10 PM to 6 AM. Typically something like that. I think mine was like 11 to seven. Yeah. Something like that. Uh, so I come off the flight line, and we had this place called the CAC, or the Community Activity Center, where right. they would serve uh, breakfast or um, what? What? Uh, what do they call the? Um, it was kind of like Hot, stir fry. Um, oh, a Mongolian. No, um, it's, I mean it's similar to a Mongolian barbecue, but they called it something else. Oh, uh, I don't know. Yeah, I don't remember. Uh, they served. Anyway. They served pizza. Beer, soft drinks, popcorn, yep. and like fried foods when I was there. Right. Yes. Yes. That's the same when when I was there. And uh, so anyway, so we get off work, and it's now Friday morning. Mm 
Mm-hmm. So our Thursday night is like Friday for, mm-hmm. you know, it's the, it's the start of our weekend on mm-hmm. Friday. Morning. So we go to the CAC and uh, yes, we made all the jokes like, yeah, let's go get down on this CAC and, you know, et cetera. Uh, so we get there, we, we eat some breakfast and uh, decide to have a couple of beers and then decide, you know what? It's the start of our weekend. Let's go change real quick and and catch a cab down to KC. Mm. It's Kunsan City Kunsan or City. Gunsan City or just Gunsan, uh, depending on who you are. Or, or downtown. Or downtown, yeah. Uh, so... <laughs> We're like hell yeah so we we get back to our our rooms you know shit and change clothes basically and then and meet up at the taxi stand like 20 or 30 minutes later uh we get down to kc it's now like 10 a.m mm-hmm. and uh because we're idiots we forgot that there are no bars open <laughs> in the uh the early part of the day no they don't open till like uh, two in the afternoon at the earliest at the earliest, yeah. Usually yeah. they open at like you know four or six. Yeah, if, or if something they serve like. food, they'll open it to maybe noon if they serve a lot of food. Yeah. So so but. we we're kind of down on ourselves, like, oh damn it, what we're fucking idiots. And we're just walking around and we're like, okay, what are we gonna do? Are we just gonna like maybe get some food in a little bit or like what are we gonna do? Well, we see we pass one of the bars and I, I cannot remember for the life of me which bar it was. Uh, but the door was open. Like, oh, shit, we might be in luck. So we go in, and the reason the door was open is because it was it was open for contractors that were going in there to to do some renovations in the place. And Papa-san comes out. Pop, Papa is like, that's like the, the term for like the, the you know, the, the barkeep, like the owner of the place, the manager. The old dude in charge. Yeah, so Papa-san comes around the corner, and he starts yelling at us, like, get out, we're not open, blah, 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 blah. And we were like, oh, come on, man, like, can we just like, like get a drink? You know, uh, you know, we'll we'll pay of course, but can we? You know, we won't tell anybody. He was like, no, 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 get out, we're closed. And I was like, we'll make it worth your while, dude. And like, I showed him like a bunch of wand and whatnot. And he was like, all right, you come over here to the corner and you don't tell anybody. <laughs> and he brought out like this this bottle of soju and uh, like a round of beers. And we just started pounding soju and sipping on these beers. I don't know. I think I remember 20, maybe 30 minutes of this. Mm. I wake up in a town at like seven or 8 PM. <laughs> so you, you wake up like 10 miles away. Yeah. I wake up. My, my head is on a, a, like a tabletop. I'm sitting in a booth surrounded by juicy girls mm. in a bar that I'd never been in before in my life. Mm hmm. My friends who I had gone down there with, I, I mean, I guess I got, I mean, obviously I got like shitty, stupid blackout drunk and, uh, they just, okay, let's get back toward the base, but, uh, let's not go back to base cause we're still partying. Uh, but what are we going to do with Fuller? Oh, um, let's take it to, let's take him to this one bar that we, that we go to a lot that, you know, we're, re- we're real good with mama son. So they, they take my stumbling ass in there. And sit me down in a booth and tell Mama San, hey, you know, we're really sorry, but like he had a little bit too much to drink in KC. And um, is it okay if like he kind of chills out here, maybe uh, try to get him to drink some water? And she's like, yes, I'll take care of him. So the girls that worked at the bar, like basically, like, like took up, like, uh, what do you want? I don't know. She basically became like my guard. <laughs> uh, so the, the, the girls were all at the booth, like trying to make me drink water. Mama San's behind me, like massaging my head. There was like one <laughs> one other person at the bar because it was like pretty early. Uh, it was the weirdest, like probably the weirdest experience <laughs> that I had, and I had a lot of weird experiences in Korea. But that was probably the weirdest experience that I had. Just like waking up, having no idea what the hell, I, where where I was, and what the hell was going on. So next week when you're TDY, yes, you're going to do the same thing, right? I hope not. <laughs> <laughs> I have, I have, uh, I have things to do and in, in, in uh, conferences to attend and things. And uh, I hope I do not have a blackout experience in Vegas next week. Oh, gee. You're, oh, you're going to Vegas next week. I'm going to Vegas next week. So oh, let me take that turf. back. <laughs> I'm going to do my damnedest <laughs> to avoid the inevitable. 
This is all to say that Kent won't be here next week, and he might not be here the week after, depending on how long the alcohol poisoning lasts. <laughs> I should be back in two weeks. Um, next week, though, we do have Rich Truffolino from DTNS, uh, Daily Tech Headlines, and several other projects, uh, producer of It's a Thing for uh, Tom and Molly, um, Gestalt IT. Like uh, He's involved in all kinds of stuff, and he's a fellow fellow at uh, Infinite Gain for Jenny Josephson. So uh, he will be here as my co-host next week. Excellent. I'm a little bit upset that I won't be here for that. Well, but if you were, if you're gonna... coming on because I won't be here. Right. <laughs> <laughs> well, and, and if for whatever reason he can't make it, uh, I do have a backup plan. It's always good to have a backup plan. Richard Gunther. Amazing. <laughs> there are way worse backups to have. <laughs> right. Exactly. So uh, next week is going to be a uh, hell of fun because Kent will be here. I mean, because I have a great guest. Uh, slash co-host. Yes, Rich from lovely Cleveland. Exactly. Uh, thank you, W. Scott is one. Um, however, uh, between now and then, Kent, where can people find you if they want to tell you all about their drunken histories of Korea? Oh, man. At me on Twitter. RM underscore Del Noche. I put something on there earlier this week that I thought was pretty funny. Uh, go there and let me know if you thought it was funny. If you didn't, um, yeah, let whatever, me know anyway. retweet it or something. Retweet if you didn't like Hit the like if you did like it. Oh, oh my God. <laughs> what about you, dude? Uh, I'm trying to do the math on that. Shouldn't it be uh, whatever? Uh, you can find me on Ethan, at, uh, on Twitter at Ethan Kane, E T H A N C A I N E. And you can find the show on Twitter at Ritual Misery, R I T U A L M I S E R Y. Uh, Flavor Toothpaste does a much better job saying Ritual Misery, as we'll find out at the end of the show. Yes, yes, we will. Um, and of course, you can, for, if you can submit ideas. If you didn't like Kent's random story that he had to tell tonight because we didn't have a main topic, cruise on over to a subreddit, uh, ritualmisery.reddit.com, and tell us what you would like us to talk about. Uh, yeah, or uh, hit us up on our Discord channel. It's, uh, uh, what is it? bit.ly slash RMP Discord? Uh, I think that's it. I don't know why you got to be busting that shit out of me on the last second. Don't you do the show notes? Uh, yeah, this one didn't transfer over for some reason. Uh, uh, RMP uh, Discord, yes. Bit.ly slash RMP Discord. Excellent. Yes, that's it. It goes right to our <laughs> Discord. <laughs> There's always fun conversations going on there, so uh, yeah. hit us up in there. And, of course, you can find all these links and more ways to support the show and give feedback at our website, ritualmisery.com. We are live every Thursday night at 7 p.m. Pacific on, at, on diamondclub.tv, I think, maybe, sometimes, and twitch.tv slash ritualmisery. Thank you. Let me hit the button. Where's the button? Do I have the button? Um, outro. Uh, thank you so much to Kevin McLeod for allowing us to use your music during the post, pre, and outro whatever and thank you for listening for kent for me for you this has been your ritual misery pie podcast see ya Diamond Club hopes you have enjoyed this broker. <laughs> R-I-T-U-A-L-M-I-S-E-L-Y